today in this lecture we are going to talk about factors that can decrease glomerular filtration rate as we have started discussing determinants of glomerular filtration rate or gfr we have discussed different determinants of the gfr like glomerular hydrostatic pressure glomerular colloid osmotic pressure bowman's capsule pressure similarly we discussed glomerular capillary coefficient kf we are discussing uh, these determinants under the urine formation process because the the primary purpose of the kidneys is to uh, form a urine and the urine formation process begins with filtration of the plasma and when it comes to filtration the rate of the filtration the filtration the speed with which filtration is occurring is very important and that rate the gfr is influenced uh, by so many factors we have discussed all those factors in detail in our previous lectures now coming back the the factors that can decrease the glomerular filtration rate as we have discussed that the the filtration the filtration of fluid from the glomerular capillaries into the bowman's capsule is dependent upon glomerular hydrostatic pressure glomerular colloid osmotic pressure bowman's capsule and the capillary coefficient similarly the afferent arteriolar pressure efferent arteriolar pressure and arterial pressure are also important which we have discussed previously now all those all those factors which are the determinants of the gfr if they are disturbed due to any reason they are definitely going to affect the gfr they can increase the gfr and they can decrease the gfr but today we are going to focus on the factors that will decrease the gfr now the first factor which we are going to uh, discuss is the the decrease in the kf the decrease in kf kf is basically the glomerular capillary permeability uh, glomerular capillary coefficient the glomerular capillary coefficient kf and this kf is basically dependent upon the permeability of these capillaries if the capillary the capillary wall allows it is if it allow the fluid to move then and similarly this kf is also dependent upon the surface area of the capillaries now if the area the area of the capillary is large and the permeability of the capillary wall is normal then kf will be normal but if due to any reason there is decrease in the permeability of the capillary wall or there is decrease in the surface area of the capillary wall then it will definitely decrease the gfr so the first factor that decreases the gfr is a decrease in the kf and the decrease in kf can occur due to renal diseases themselves different diseases occur in the kidney directly and it can also occur it can also decrease in the diabetes or hypertension now most of the renal diseases diabetes and hypertension they thicken this membrane they thicken this glomerular capillary membrane and due to which the filtration due to which the filtration of fluid from the capillary the glomerular capillary into the bowman's capsule decreases hence the kf decreases due to which the glomerular filtration rate decreases so decrease in kf is the first factor which decreases the gfr and this decrease in kf is brought by renal diseases diabetes and hypertension apart from a lot of other conditions which can decrease kf these are the common conditions which can decrease kf now the second factor is the increase in glomerular hydrostatic pressure now glomerular hydrostatic pressure if it is increased if this pressure is increased uh, sorry the 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 bowman's capsule if the bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure is increased pressure of the bowman's capsule pb pb is from the pressure of the bowman's capsule now if this pressure increases we have discussed multiple times in our previous lectures that glomerular hydrostatic pressure is basically favoring the filtration process but the bowman's capsule pressure and glomerular colloid osmotic pressure they are they are opposing the filtration process they are opposing the filtration process these forces are opposite to this force so any factor which increases this force will definitely decrease the gfr and the most common causes for increase in this pressure the bowman's capsule pressure is urinary tract obstruction any condition like uh, renal calculi or stones in the kidney which block the flow of urine from the bowman's capsule Uh, down to the ureter at any level obstruction at any level in the kidney can increase the bowman's capsule pressure and it will then in uh, decrease the gfr so this is another factor which can decrease gfr then increase in the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure glomerular colloid osmotic pressure also opposes the filtration process so factors which increase the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will decrease the gfr and glomerular colloid osmotic pressure is basically due to proteins in the glomerular capillary so factors which will increase protein in the glomerular capillaries will increase glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and increase in glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will decrease gfr so increase in the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will decrease gfr and this increase this high g glomerular colloid osmotic pressure is caused by decrease in renal blood flow and increase in plasma proteins now if 
large number of proteins or high amount of proteins are coming from the plasma directly into the uh, glomerular capillaries then definitely the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will increase but if the plasma flow is decreased if blood is flowing slowly if blood is flowing slowly suppose for example if blood is flowing slowly then a large portion of the plasma will be filtered and proteins will get concentrated and this pressure will increase and it will decrease the gfr now if plasma is flowing with normal speed then the fraction will be normal the fraction of plasma that is filtered will be normal and the concentration of protein will not increase as it has increased here so the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will not increase in normal plasma flow and gfr will not decrease but if renal blood flow decreases due to decreased flow the filtration fraction will increase when filtration fraction increases the protein concentration occurs like this normally the proteins are present like this but due to slow flow concentration of proteins can occur in the glomerular capillaries and high concentration of proteins will increase glomerular colloid osmotic pressure which in turn will decrease gfr now coming to the factors which will decrease glomerular hydrostatic pressure so de decrease in this pressure glomerular hydrostatic pressure which normally favors the filtration process any factor which decreases this pressure will decrease the gfr now there are a lot of factors which can decrease the glomerular colloid uh, hydrostatic pressure this glomerular colloid osmotic pressure is due to proteins but the glomerular hydrostatic pressure is due to pressure of the fluids in the blood or the plasma now first of all decrease in the arterial pressure the decrease in arterial pressure can decrease glomerular hydrostatic pressure which in turn can uh, basically uh, which in turn can be caused by decreased arterial pressure so it is very easy that if the pressure the pressure or the flow with which the blood is coming if that flow is decreased if that flow is decreased for example due to shock due to bleeding a lot of fluid loss can occur due to which the flow of the blood or the plasma has decreased then it can directly lead to decrease in the hydrostatic pressure and it will decrease the gfr now now the glomerular hydrostatic pressure can also decrease it can also decrease due to decrease in resistance it can also decrease due to due to decrease in resistance of the efferent arteriole now the efferent arteriole resistance when decreased a lot of fluid will be going out through the efferent arteriole so pressure in the glomerular capillaries will be lost and due to which the glomerular hydrostatic pressure will decrease so decrease in resistance decrease in resistance of the efferent arteriole can also decrease glomerular hydrostatic pressure because when this resistance is decreased no pressure will be accumulating or no fluid will be accumulating because the flow will be high so due to no uh, pressure or no um, dump, dumping of the fluid in the capillaries the pressure the hydro glomerular hydrostatic pressure will decrease and it will basically lead to decrease in the gfr now the decrease in the resistance of efferent arteriole is caused by decreased angiotensin 2 now angiotensin 2 which is responsible for constriction of these of efferent arterioles if angiotensin 2 is blocked due to some drugs for example drugs that block the formation of angiotensin 2 there are a lot of drugs ac inhibitors which can block uh, angiotensin 2 they will not be able to act here and the resistance will decrease there will be decrease in the resistance at the efferent arteriole so the pressure will be lost and the glomerular hydrostatic pressure will decrease now finally increase in the afferent arteriolar resistance will lead to decrease blood flow coming into the glomerular capillaries which will also lead to decrease in glomerular hydrostatic pressure now decrease in the efferent end and increase in the afferent end see decrease in the efferent arteriolar resistance and increase in the afferent arteriolar resistance have the same effect both will decrease the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and both will decrease the gfr now increase at this end can occur due to increased sympathetic activity and vasoconstrictor hormones like norepinephrine these substances the norepinephrine and sympathetics they will constrict this area when they constrict this area the flow of plasma into the glomerular capillaries will fall it will decrease the glomerular hydrostatic pressure will decrease and gfr will decrease now we previously discussed that the afferent and the efferent arteriole they act a little bit differently at the afferent arteriolar end if the resistance is increased the blood flow decreases in the gfr also decreases but at the efferent arteriole if the resistance is slightly increased then the gfr increases with slight increase in resistance the gfr increases so decrease in resistance decrease in resistance initially at the efferent end will be associated with decrease in gfr and increase in resistance at the afferent end will be associated with decrease in gfr now if the resistance at the efferent end if at this end if the resistance increases 
too much more than three times of normal then the gfr can fall back to the normal or even below normal but initially when a slight resistance increases at the efferent end the gfr basically starts increasing above the normal so that's why at the at the efferent end decrease in the resistance decrease in resistance and at the afferent end increase in resistance both will decrease glomerular hydrostatic pressure and both will decrease gfr now decrease in the efferent end resistance decrease in resistant resistance at this end is caused by decreased angiotensin 2 while increase in resistance at this end can be caused by sympathetic activity or vasoconstrictor hormones like norepinephrine thanks a lot for watching the video